and welcome back for another Tool Time Tuesday. I'm Melissa Muir. In one of my last videos, I showed about a product called the Bulletproof Dyes and also their embossing inserts. A lot of people know that I use the hydraulic press, but these can also be used without the hydraulic press, and that stemmed a lot of questions. So I figured I would show you really quickly how you can use these dyes with your vise. So let's take a look to see how I set it up and how it works. Here we have one of the dies. It has kind of a rounded corner. It's a little bit wider here at the bottom. And I also have a corresponding insert that goes into this. So you'll notice here there's also just this little tab. And I use that as an indicator to put that, you know, um, so that that's the part that's away from my metal. So what I'm going to do is take some time, make sure that everything is centered right here how I want it, or if I really wanted to offset my piece, like I could move it up or down or whatever the case might be. But in this case, I just want it to be right in the center. Once I have that set, I'm just going to take some blue painter's tape and put that on here, smooth that down just a little bit, and that's going to help everything stay in place. Then I'm ready to move this over, upside down, where I can then take and place my metal. So in this case, this is 20 gauge annealed copper. I'm going to place this right on top of that. You can center this if you want. You could also start this part out first if that's how you wanted to do this. And then I will just use my tape to kind of secure that down here a bit. And that way everything holds into place. Next, I'm going to move over to the vise and I'll show you the rest. I need to use the rubber that comes with this and I like to keep them in the stacks of three. You can buy additionals as well so that you can use these as enhancers or kind of like a pusher. So what I'm going to do is I want to cut uh, a piece that's about the same size as the piece that I'm going to be forming and that way then I can insert this into there and it will kind of help push that down a little bit further into that area. So you can see I'm just doing this with scissors. So now that I have that, I can also put this here and then these on top. And what that does is it gives us a little bit more concentrated area. This works with your urethane as well, whether you're on the hydraulic press or we're here. So once I have this, I've got my stack now ready. See, I've got those enhancers in there. You're just going to use these uh, plates, and they're just a, it's an electrical cover plate is what it is. So you can either get this through the toolcottage.com, or you can just go over to Home Depot and get these, and that's all you need. So now we've got our stack ready to go. Let's see how to put it into the vise. So here at my vise, I have a five inch bench vise is what this is called, meaning that my jaws are about five inches long. Uh, you can see that I've created some little copper covers, put that onto there. So that's one way of working this. And what I'm going to do is you wanna make sure that when you put your rubber onto this to your stack, you wanna make certain that you get it onto the side with your metal. So here I'm going to take the little enhancers that we've created and then I'm going to place the rubber on top of that. Again, that's just going to help push that metal into the, the recesses there with the dies. So I'm going to put this in. So now I've got my stack created. I, again, just like with the hydraulic press, I try to make sure everything is pretty well centered. Now, if you don't happen to have a big enough jaw in this where you can take this and insert it down and have it really hit that halfway point, you can actually do it in a couple passes. So get the bottom part, turn it around, and then do the top part. Mine is just about big enough, so I should be able to get this in here fairly well centered. So everything is in here now. Again, everything is centered so that I make certain that my biggest force goes right through the center of that die where I'm doing the embossing, or the forming rather. So I'm going to give this some really good pressure here. I'm also looking to see any of that closing down that happens, kind of like with the urethane and the hydraulic press. I am giving quite a bit of pressure on this, and I can see that I've kind of closed down this area down into here. 
So now I'm gonna open this up and we'll see what we have. I may actually have to do this more than once, especially since I'm not able to apply like four, three to 4,000 pounds like I do with a hydraulic press. So as we pull this away, I do have a little bit of an indention in here, but it's not huge. And this is also pretty thick copper. If you were working with a thinner gauge, say 24, 22, something like that, you're definitely going to have some better results. So in this case, it's 20 gauge. My results are not as dramatic as it would have been with a thinner metal, but you can see that I definitely have a good impression started here. So what I would do is I'd go back to anneal this and then just line everything back up. If I don't take off the tape off of this part that's holding that uh, position or centered part in position, then all I'm gonna have to do is anneal this and then I can line it back up and go from there. But anyway, that I hope that helps. Another thing that you can do as well is you can always take these little spacers, or not spacers, but the embossing dies that they offer. And you could even put your metal into place and then put your embossing die on just like this and then push. And that's going to give you a very dramatic effect, but also very, very different uh, because you now have a pusher to work that metal into the opening of your silhouette die. So I hope that answers some of the questions that you guys had regarding using these dies with the vise. Again, if you have thinner metal, it's going to be a much more dramatic result than what I had here with a 20 gauge copper. So give it a try and see what you think. Very affordable, cheaper alternative. But still, even in the end, I would still highly suggest the hydraulic press if this is something that you were going to be doing quite often.